Hey, it's Prerak and today we'll clear some air on tuning. And that is the very basic of tuning. And that is how every aspect of your vehicle can actually be tuned. Is tuning legal, however? Legality aside, is it safe for your engine? So what is tuning? Before we get to that, let's learn some basics. An engine needs three things to run properly. Air, fuel and spark. All of this needs to happen in a particular sequence. Air and fuel needs to enter the combustion chamber. The air fuel mixture needs to be compressed and a spark needs to be ignited at the perfect timing. When that spark happens, power stroke occurs. That is ultimately what makes power for your engine. And the explosion that has just happened has created some exhaust gases. They all need to escape via the exhaust valve. All of this sequence is known as timing and it is very vital. If your engine is out of time, the exhaust or the intake valves can meet your piston and blow your engine up. You do not want that. But moving back to the basic elements, air, fuel and spark. To add more power to your car, you can add more air and request more fuel. So it will ultimately lead to a bigger explosion inside of the combustion chamber, which will make more power. And that is the very basic tuning. Back in the early days when things were simpler and I wasn't born, cars used to have a device known as the carburetor, which would mix the air and fuel together before it even entered the combustion chamber. That mixture was known as the air-fuel mixture. You could play around with how much more air or fuel you need because fuel could be tweaked with jets. Carburetors used to have jets in them which would spray fuel in and if you play around with the jets, you could let more fuel into it. And by tweaking the slides or the valves, you could let more air in. The ratio in which you let more air or more fuel in is known as the air-fuel ratio or the AFR, which is an important term. If this mixture has more air than fuel, it is known as a lean mixture. If it has more fuel than air, it is known as a rich mixture. For a smooth idle and good amount of power throughout the rev range, this AFR needs to be dialed accurately. So mechanics would go on to master carburetor tuning to dial in that AFR accurately according to your need, be it more power, more fuel efficiency or a mix of both. But as cars started to modernize, so did the engine components and electronic fuel injection was invented, making the carburetors go extinct. Now to fine tune your AFR, you need to tap into the ECU or the ECM, which wasn't very straightforward for the first few years. Because back then you could not just put a tool in the OBD port and access the parameters of the ECU like you can today. Back then you had to physically remove the chip which was responsible for the AFR and other parameters like that and replace it with the desired one. That was known as chip tuning, which doesn't exist anymore either. Because these days, you can just stick a tool in your OBD port and directly access the parameters of your ECU if you have the correct tool. And that is what has made tuning so much more accessible. Almost every city in India has a reputable tuner. As I mentioned, you need special tools to tap into your ECU. If you have a slave tool, you can flash pre-made maps onto your ECU. But if you have a master tool, then you can create your own maps, create your own AFR tables and change the power of your car. For example, if I wish to make more power on my Polo, I can demand slightly more boost from the ECU, which will push more air into the combustion chamber and demand slightly more fuel. So a bigger explosion can occur, which will ultimately make more power. Now I'm adding more air and fuel. I can advance the timing just a little bit. So the peak of the explosion occurs as the piston is moving down. That is known as advancing the timing. Because I've added more fuel and air, the combustion will take slightly longer to occur or to reach its peak potential. So you want that peak potential as the piston is moving down, not at the very top. So you can advance the timing slightly so the before the piston even moves to the top, the explosion can start to occur and the peak of it is received as it is moving down, making more power again. Imagine you're pushing someone on a swing. You wouldn't push them as they're approaching. You would tense up your muscles and gather the strength to start to push them once they have stopped at the very extreme and then you will push them. That will yield the best result and that is how advancing the timing can improve the power of the engine. So these are just two examples of the parameters that you can play with in order to make more power from your engine. My Polo is running a stage 2 tune, but what does stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3 even mean? 
These stages are named so the consumer can digest the concept of tuning easily. In a stage 1 tune, the parameters of your ECU are tweaked just a little bit. Slightly more boost is requested, the AFR is tampered with slightly to add more power to your engine without needing too many hardware upgrades. Maybe a better air filter at max. When you start to change the hardware of your car, let's say you go for a custom exhaust which deletes your catalytic converters or you go for a race cat. That has removed a lot of restriction from the exhaust which will unlock more power. But the true potential of that power can be truly felt when it is paired with a tune. That tune is known as a stage 2 tune because you've changed some hardware around your car. That tune is not very different from a stage 1 tune. It's just that the less restrictive exhaust now unlocks more power for your engine. If you start to change even more hardware, let's say you wish to add a turbocharger or a supercharger to your vehicle, that tune would be known as a stage 3 tune. It's just the stage at which you're modifying your vehicle. Stage 1 is barely any hardware changes. Stage 2 is yeah, you've got some hardware changes. And stage 3 is you've gone for major hardware changes like a turbo upgrade. On this car, if I upgrade it from a KO3 to a KO4, I would require a custom stage 3 tune. If I go from a KO4 to a KO4 hybrid, again, I would require a custom tune. It would still be called a stage 3 tune because that is the level at which I'm modifying my vehicle. Any hardware changes that you make to your car should be paired with a custom tune to unlock the full potential of the mod that, that you're doing. But custom maps can get really expensive. So off-the-shelf maps which are pre-made are available for all, by almost all the tuners in India. For simplifying it, they just named it Stage 1, Stage 2 and Stage 3. Stage 3 is almost every time a custom map because a turbo upgrade or adding a turbo needs to be custom calibrated. Is tuning your car legal though? Well, any form of modification done to your vehicle is not legal in India. But everyone modifies their car to some extent. Well, that is where police system comes in. This, they have given us some slack from the very stern rule of not being able to modify anything on your car. Not even a single bolt can be changed. And if you respect the police system and you're not being a nuisance on the road and you're abiding by all the rules, the police system pays that respect back and they don't bother us. Recently, you must have noticed that they are catching anyone with LED headlights, alloy wheels, and rightfully so, because the alloy wheel scene had gotten out of hand by Thar owners sticking their wheels out 6 inches from the vehicle, sometimes even almost a foot, which is not safe on the road at all. Those wheels can break off, those wheels can hit anyone on the road. You are making your car much wider than it is from factory. So that is not good. And same goes for LED headlights. People have started to install 300, 400 watt LED headlights in their puny reflector housing headlights and they're not even installed correctly. So instead of lighting up the road, they're blinding the oncoming traffic, frying their eyes and it does cause accidents. And action had to be taken against them, obviously. Same goes with tuning. If you get your car tuned with a pops and bangs tune and you're trying to show it off at night in a crowded space when everyone is trying to sleep in a residential area, you will get punished for it. All of this tuning and modifying your vehicle is done for that occasional joy when you're on the back roads, maybe driving your car or during car meets. It's not something that you should enjoy in a public place where people can get, can get bothered. At that time, police has to intervene and stop you. So all of this sort of falls in a grey area. It is not legal. It is illegal, but not much action is taken against it because we have some slack from the police system. That doesn't mean you should exploit all of this. So if you are in your lane, no one will bother you. But if you bother people, the police and the system will bother you. So you be the judge if this is legal or not legal. Legality aside, is it safe for your engine? Tuning your car is safe if you are going to a reputable tuner. A tuner can either make your car or break your car entirely. Most people think that if the engine can make more power, why don't the manufacturers give a tune in which it does make more power? Won't it sell more? Well, the manufacturers have to comply with a lot of norms. They have to make sure the car is fuel efficient in the lower rev range, higher rev range and throughout. They have to comply with so many restrictions throughout that they just cannot give you the maximum power. 
they have to comply with emission norms which kills a lot more power so if you change the hardware bits of your car a little bit and go for a tune a lot of power can be unlocked from your engine if you have a turbocharged vehicle for a stage 1 tune you can expect about 10 to 20 percent increase in the power for a stage 2 tune you can expect 30 to 40 percent if you have a turbocharged vehicle on a stage 3 tune it totally depends on your hardware how much power you can unlock if you go for a built engine for example on the lora if i go for a built engine with a great turbo i can tap into the 300 to 400 horsepower range while stock it is just 160 with a stage 2 tune this vehicle can go up to 240 horsepower so that is the potential of tuning and changing some hardware of a vehicle the engine holds a lot more potential than what the manufacturer provides because they are going aiming for reliability they want the engine to run for 200 300 thousand kilometers and they have to comply with so many norms so they just cannot give you the maximum power your engine can make but as a consumer you can do whatever you want i've tested all the brands of maps that are available in india on the polo gt three years ago i drove a stage 2 tuned Polo GT which was done by E-Tuners Greece. I liked that map so much because it had good amount of power and refinement that I decided to get affiliated with E-Tuners Greece and we started to tune cars with them. So if you want your car tuned here in Panchkula, you can hit us up at tunedcars.co and we can facilitate that for you. Obviously, I'm not discrediting all the other brands that are available in India. They have been there for many years now and they have been tuning so many cars. So as a consumer, do your own due diligence as to which map to go for. But the term tuning is not just limited to the ECU. Tuning can be done to any aspect of your car. For example, if you have a coilover suspension, you can tune that according to your own style. You can adjust the height of the car by adjusting the coilovers. You can adjust the preload or the damping stiffness on them. So that in different scenarios, the suspension acts a little differently. For different motorsports, suspension varies in so many styles. You can either increase the height of your car for rally or reduce it for drag or race applications. So tuning is not limited to the ECUs alone. Every aspect of your car can be tuned. Even your transmission can be tuned. If you have an automatic transmission, you can go for a TCU map. TCU stands for Transmission Control Unit. You can go for a map so that you can have quicker shift. If you have a manual gearbox, you can open that gearbox, change the gear sets inside of them so that the gearing of the transmission has been changed. That is how you tune a manual gearbox. You can change the gear ratios of it. You can fine tune it based on your application. If your application is rally, drag or whatever, you can change your gear ratios based on that. And that is how every aspect of your vehicle can actually be tuned. So yeah, that was it on tuning. If you want more of such informational videos on any other subject, leave them in the comments down below. I hope this video was insightful and entertaining enough. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.